Hello and welcome to this weekend's show, the preview show, as we look ahead to the game at Swansea City. I'm delighted to be joined by former strikers Ewan Roberts and Pavel Abbott, and of course the Yorkshire Post's chief football writer Stuart Rayner. How are you all? You okay? Yeah, good, thank good. you. Good, thank you. Thanks, yeah. It's really good to hear. Uh, Ewan, we'll start with you. Obviously, Swansea City this weekend. You've covered them this year. What what should Huddersfield Town fans expect from them? A confident side. Um, we've made a very good start to the season. Um, what, 10 points from their opening four games. Solid defensively. Uh, they, they play a back five, which Steve Cooper brought in in, in the restart to end, of, to, end, to end last season, got themselves into the playoffs. Um, they're... they're they're a competent side. Don't don't score as many goals as as what they'd like. I mean, their main goal threat is Andre Ayew, who's probably one of the best centre forwards in this division. Who probably should be playing at a higher level. Um, whether he's still there by tomorrow, obviously we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, but they've got pace up front. You know, they've, they've lost a few players because uh, Steve had to use his contacts in the low market last year for the likes of. Ben Wilmot, uh, Conor Gallagher, Rian Brewster, they've all gone back to, to, to their clubs. He's still caught Mark Gouhi, uh, the, the Chelsea central defender. They've got Freddie Woodman back on loan, the goalkeeper from, from Newcastle. So his starting 11, which has been the same starting 11 for all four games, is very, very strong. You know, he's brought Morgan Gibbs White in from, from Wolverhampton, they've, they've brought Jamal Lowe in from Wigan. Corey Smith, they, they've got from Bristol City on a free transfer. So, from one, they're starting 11 for the first four games is very, very strong. But they do struggle for, for strength in depth. But, you know, they've got pace up front in, in low, Gibbs White and, and, and Andre Ayew. Uh, Marty Grimes in, mid, in midfield, the captain, he's a tremendous player. But as I say, their, their strength is, is their back five uh, with the wing backs, Connor Roberts and Jake Bidwell. They love bombing forward. Um, so it'll be a tough game. I mean, they're not as good, or they don't play as well at the Liberty as they do away from home. Um, so that you know that should give Huddersfield some hope going going down there. Why? Why do you think that is, Ewan? I think I think they, I think they're a counter-attacking side. I, I think they do find it hard when teams visit the Liberty, get men behind the ball, and and. And defend in numbers and, and defend deeply, you know, just outside their own penalty box. And, and they have, have at times found it hard to, to break teams down. Um, away from home, you know, the onus is on the home side to attack and, and be more adventurous. And, and that's when Swansea at their best, I think, when they do a counter attack with the pace they've got. Pav, have you, have you found that obviously? Uh, in your playing career that, that you've preferred almost playing away rather than at home? Not really, no. No, I've, I was never never one to sort of look at things like that. For me, just a game's a game, whether uh, whether, uh, whether it's home, away, what, what rain in, sunny, what, whatever, you know, it's it's a game you've, you've just got to get, get on with it. Uh, I know a lot of the lads used to be superstitious and, and stuff like that, but I never, never bought into things like that, just try to get myself mentally ready by just saying it's just another game and, and not, not, look, not looking too much into it. I, I suppose as well, for, for on the back of what, what you and saying, a home side's expected to go out and attack. Uh, in terms of there not being a crowd there, I can imagine Pav, that, that changes quite a lot, doesn't it? A, a mindset almost, because then you can play the style you want to play without having that added crowd pressure. Well, yeah, you've got you've got your pluses and your minuses of, of, of not playing in front of a crowd, especially when when there's a crowd what expects a lot out of you. Sometimes it's better to uh, not not to have many, especially if you're changing styles and and, and you know still want to want to play a different when not everybody yet fits the style. So uh, so you know it's it's, it's one of them, and it were. Uh, but I think end of the day, you know everybody would prefer to play in, in front of a crowd than. And nobody being there. Did you ever have any superstitions like that? You would play, preferring to play at home or away, or like putting your boot on how long, have, how long have you got? 
<laughs> Honestly, I I was the most superstitious player of the lot. I had so many little things that I I did on a on a Friday night, on a on a Saturday morning, uh, that yeah. two hour period when you get to the ground. Um, oh, honestly, I've got too many to mention. I'm not. <laughs> T touch wood these days, I'm not as bad. <laughs> touch wood, yeah. Touch, touch wood, I'm not too bad. <laughs> There's an old one for you there. What was the strangest one you had? Um, I always used to take my teeth out last. <laughs> <laughs> now, for, for some reason, I always used to put my left boot on first before my right. Don't ask me... I, and something must have happened. I must have played a game and it sort of played on my mind that that was my routine. I'd put, And then you stick to whatever brings you success sort of thing. You try and stick to that same routine if you've played well, especially as strikers. If you're scoring goals, you don't want to change things. You, you, you wear the same underpants, you'll have the same pre-match same pre meal, anything that will give you an edge to, to hopefully uh, replicate that, that your last performance. Stuart, obviously re reporting on the game for so long. How do how do you and superstitions rank with ones that you've heard? Oh, I've I've heard some pretty pretty strange ones over the years. Yeah, from uh, from, from various different sports. I remember uh, Neil McKenzie, the South African batsman, used to tape his bat to the ceiling of the dressing room because I think somebody did it as a prank once, and it he pulled it down and went up and scored a century. Yeah. I mean, some absolutely bizarre things can. Uh, can can seep into superstition. Fantastic. It's amazing those little superstitions when you put them together. I always remember Tommy Elphick used to go and like almost headbutt the the post before the start of a game as well. Really, really strange. Um Stuart, obviously ready for, for this game. It should be a really interesting one, shouldn't it? Carlos Corbran said in his press conference that it's two sides that that want to play a similar style, that have similar behaviours, it'll be interesting, won't it? Yeah, you, you would think that um, a team of Swansea's quality should should kind of suit Huddersfield because, you know, whilst they've still got a couple of Warriors in the team, you know, people like Jonathan Hogg and Richard Stearman, it, it's generally a team play to, to get the ball down and play nowadays. So you, you would you would think that they would, they would prefer to come up against that sort of style um, rather than a team that comes come spoiling for a fight. But of course, you know, it, it's all well and good coming against a style that you like playing against. But if they're very good at it, like Swansea, it's the, you know, it still makes for, for a difficult afternoon. But it, it should be a it should be a good good test of their progression, I would say. I, I can imagine for you, you and it will be really interesting. We, we've spoken this summer about the change of style at Huddersfield Town. It'll be interesting for you to to see it against a well oiled machine like Swansea. Yeah, sadly, I won't be there. I'll be at Wheelston v Wrexham, sadly. Oh, no. Yeah, but no, um, I, I saw quite a bit of the game, um, your first game of the season against Norwich, and I thought you were very unlucky in in the way you you lost that. Two of my former clubs, of course. But it, it, it takes time when you've got a manager who's come in, who's got a different philosophy, different ideas, different way that he wants his team to, to play. You know, you've got a few, you've got a few new faces in there. And I think the difference between this season and any other season, your new head coach has only had a, a small window, really, to work with the players because the season didn't finish until July and then a few weeks off, not the same period as what you normally would have, your, your, your six, seven weeks of pre-season, what, a couple of weeks of pre-season for, for him to, to work with the players and for him to get his ideas uh, and his methods across to them. But I, I think... I think we've seen in the last two performances that you know the players are starting to buy into that now, and and, and it's brought you success. Yeah, Stuart, I'm sure you can echo that as well from obviously watching us. Yeah, I mean, saying to saying to Colbran yesterday, it almost feels like this first section of the season just gone has been a pre-season really. Um, you know, just playing once a week, mm. having this two-week international break to work on things. And now we're into Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. You know, they, they really need to be into the, the stride because there isn't much time on the training ground, you know, to put things right. So, to say, the last two weeks in particular, these two have been a lot of, you know, drilling into people, the, the ideas of what they want. And as Ewan says, you know, 
as time's gone on, the players have looked like they've adapted to it better. Obviously, the squad's been added to, and and hopefully now, say so they can they can really get up and running it and and build some momentum. What's that like, Pav? When when a new manager comes in and they they want to change the style of play? Well, it's it's not it's not easy. Obviously, you sort of you're used to a style of play, and then suddenly new manager comes in. Obviously, depending when he does come in, if it's before the season, then you've obviously got a bit of chance uh, to get to know the style and 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 try and learn it. Uh, but it's one of them things again. You've just got to get on with it. Yeah, uh, where where you know if 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 you're told to play a certain way, you you have a match it or, or, or you know obviously the the manager won't 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 pick you so uh, it, it can be difficult but but as I say I'll just get on with it. From from your experience when for example in, in Huddersfield Town's case as well when you go from being a man marking team to a space marking team it's a completely different element yeah, of yeah. football. How how long does that take? Uh, well, I didn't do too much marking, so, <laughs> so I can tell, tell you about marking. But, but I can only because uh, because you, you've got your habits. I mean, obviously, the more the longer you play and, and you play a certain style, and as a defender, uh, I think you know if 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 you're used to man marking, then you know it's it's you know you sort of get caught in two minds sometimes. So until you get the habit of of, of a new style, then then I can imagine it is pretty pretty difficult. Would, would, is that something that that you'd echo from your experience in in football as well, you? Or been been man marked? You mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Talk it, to me. It, in terms of style of play, just oh, how yeah, long yeah, does yeah. it take to do adapt? Know, do you know what? As long as you're playing, that's the most important thing. Yeah. You know, you, you, and players are adaptable. You have to be, um, and. You know, people think if you're, if you're a, a, a centre forward who's over six foot two, six foot three, um, that, that you can't play on the floor. Well, you won't be a professional footballer if you couldn't play on the floor. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, players are adaptable, and, 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 and as I said, as long as you're playing, you'll you'll play whichever way the manager wants you to play. Yeah, and, and talking about centre forwards, obviously Stuart Fraser Campbell won. Uh, the Goal of the Month award, it was an, announced um, for, for September. How impressed have you been in the way that he's fitted into the system? Obviously, Danny Ward, who we signed in the summers, has been injured and, and Fraser's come back from an injury as well. But he seems to have fitted in to that style of play really nicely. Yeah, well, I mean, he's obviously a very experienced and adaptable player. You know, he's played under so many managers in so many different styles. You know, he's a sort of intelligent player who you would expect to be able to fit in. But I think until until he got fit, I think Huddersfield really missed him because with Danny Ward injured, they, they just didn't have that focal point as a striker. And, it, you know, these two guys, I'll tell you, it, it's difficult for, you know, a winger or, or a midfielder to, to fit in as a centre forward. And it's difficult for the players feeding them, you know, to, to know what sort of balls they can play into them and, and that sort of thing. But, and just having that focal point... You know, you, you kind of think of a target man as sort of a long ball thing, but just having a focal point in any team really it, it, is is really important. And and they missed that until uh, until Campbell got fit. From from watching Huddersfield Town so far this season uh, and studying the strikers, what what do you think is expected from from a striker at Huddersfield Town? Well, I, I think it's all about. Um, all about being able to hold the ball up and bring other people into play. You know, it's about making those those runs into the channels. It's an unselfish job, really. You know, and we we saw last season Fraser Campbell didn't score that many goals, but he was really highly valued by Dan Carvey because of, of what he brings to the the all round team. And you know, I think sometimes when you're playing as a as a sole centre forward, you know, we often see centre forwards in number nines as quite a selfish job. But sometimes when you're the only one up front, it can be you know, you do have to do a lot of legwork for other people. and it, it can almost be as much about the players around you as, as yourselves. You know, I mean, these guys are, are both have played in twos and in ones. And it, it's, uh, it, it, can, it can be an unselfish job. At do, you, do you think, Pav, you and that the role of a centre-forward has, has changed since, since you two were both playing? 
think so, yeah. I think uh, it's more, uh, as was mentioned earlier, it's the it, it, uh, target man. It's not just, you know, long balls up in the air. It, you know, you've, more and more you've got to, got to start using, uh, using your feet as well. Uh, I mean, it's always been the case. I think you know, as you know, back when back when we still played, so uh, so it wasn't just just in the air uh, all the time. But especially, like, I think you need to you got to be uh, as the years go by that you know you you can see the number nines are getting much better on the ball. Uh, like Harry Kane now, he he drops shot a lot now and and sort of feeds the the, the wingers. Uh, and, and I think we, you, you can see quite a lot more of that uh, recently. I think another thing that's changed as well, you know, when these two guys were playing, you'd, you'd want to get the ball wide and get crosses in for them because they were both so good in the air. Nowadays, the players playing wide are almost like extra centre forwards. Mm. They're much happier cutting in and having a shot than actually getting wide and crossing. So that, that in itself changes the role, you know, of the guy on the receiving end. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, uh, is it like talking about cha uh, changing styles, and I really, when I ever played, we didn't really change styles because I was always sort of brought into a team to do that job to to be uh, like a number nine and and obviously get uh, two three touches, get it out wide, and get in the box. That, that's all. That's all I had, had to do, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's only if you if you look at years gone past the amount of centre forwards who would be getting 25-30 goals and I'm talking 80s, 90s early 2000s um, but nowadays it's only a handful you know, especially at Premier League level which will get you 20 plus you know, it's only two or three um, and I think that responsibility for, for a forward even though still got to score goals. That's why you play in that position. But I think because you've got wingers, as Stuart said, who love cutting in, you've, you've got a, a right-footed winger playing on the left, same on, on the right. Um, that, that pressure isn't as great this day and I don't think for, for the forward to go and get 20 goals. I mean, look at Firmino at Liverpool. You know, doesn't score too many goals. He only scored one at Anfield last year. But his role in that team is invaluable. The way he links up plays great with his back to back to goal. You know, brings Mane and, and Salah into the game and takes so much pressure. Pressure. His work rate is phenomenal. You know, I I played it. I only played played the majority of my games with with two up front. Really enjoyed it. Played played as a lone striker. Not maybe can count them on one hand. And I found it hard. I did. You know, I didn't have the pace to go and cause caused the two centre-halves problem. I wasn't great at working the channels. Uh, felt isolated up there. You know, you, you spend, spend lots of, of the 90 minutes without touching the ball, which can frustrate you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit old school. I'd much rather play with somebody up front. <laughs> Did you have any experiences of playing as a lone striker? Were you in as, as a two for the majority? Well, when I was playing in England, it was majority was was uh, two up from. Yeah. Uh, but when when I played in Poland and played for six years, it was mainly a four five one. And as Ewan was saying, it's so frustrating because some games you you know you'd hardly touch yeah. the ball, and yeah. but 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 you'd you, you'd come off knackered because you you'd just be running all the time, and and then you come off, and then people say, "Well, he's hardly touched the ball. He's he's not scored." And you know, as the games go on, you you, you don't score, and that, and that pressure piles on a bit, and uh, and you, you know, you think you're coming off it really tired and, and frustrated because you know everyone wants to when you're playing, you just you just want the ball, really, don't you? So, uh, so it, it does get frustrating. But as I say, I'd, I I preferred dinner two as well. Uh, it just seemed to have when you did get the ball, you just seemed to have uh, a lot more time with it uh, as well. When you just one up front, then and you know the two two de centre defenders do really close to you, and, and it's it's harder. It's been the evolution of football, hasn't it? Playing with almost a, a three, but two of them obviously being being wide men that threaten from those areas. Uh, you and we we spoke before about. Danny Ward, obviously he joined Huddersfield Town this summer as a free agent, but was previously at, at Cardiff City. 
he's out injured at the moment, but that'll be another big boost when he returns. You're a big fan of his, aren't you? I, I a big fan. Um, watched him many times over this over this time at Cardiff. Couldn't believe that he didn't start as many games um, as as he didn't last year. If if you know what I mean, I think he was there. Joint, tech, joint second top scorer. Uh, I think only Lee Tomlin scored more goals than him. The majority of his goals came when he, he came off the bench. You know, he's a workhorse, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. He's got a nice touch. He's got a lovely left foot. He's got a bit, a bit of pace about him. Good movement, and and I think that's that's what Huddersfield Town need. They, they need goals. Um, I think you were what the fifth lowest scorers in the championship last season. Fifty-two goals or or. or towards that, that total. So that needs to, to improve. Obviously, you've lost Grant, which is a massive hole to fill. But you, you have got two experienced lads up there who, throughout their careers, have, have scored goals. Yeah, absolutely. Stuart, that's a benefit for Huddersfield Town fans, or a blessing for them to hear, obviously, because they've only known Danny Ward as, as a winger, primarily from his time here. On the back of what Ewan said, to have him alongside... Uh, Fraser Campbell up front then the options and the type of player we want in that in that style they're both there well and it, it does give you the option of, of what they had with with Carl and Grant as well of playing Danny Ward that wide and effectively having two centre forwards even though one of them's yeah. coming in off the wing you know that that seems to seems to be the way of it nowadays but yeah I mean you know you mentioned the sort of the workhorse centre forward and and it it does sound like a really disparaging term, but all the championship teams need them. I mean, you know, you look at you look at Leeds United with Patrick Bamford and, and and that was just about, you know, really working hard for the team and you can go all the way down the division. There's there's loads of loads of really good strikers in that division who you can just rely on to 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 put the graft in four to six games a season and you know what you get from them. And you know, players like that are absolutely invaluable. And equally, I, I can imagine you and Pav, you'll, you'll be able to tell me, but by being that lone striker, you can then make the runs to create space for those wide men to, to have the this, this space to have a shot or to slip someone else through. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's an unselfish role at times. You know, you, you've, got to, you've got to create space for, for others to capitalise on. Um, and I was always told to stay... In between the width of, of the penalty box, I used to hate going into wide areas because I wanted to be the one on the end of the cross, not the one putting the cross in. But how many times do you, you see the likes of Harry Kane, Jamie Vardy, Aguero in those wide areas putting balls in because they know, even though that they're the main centre forward, they're the only centre forward in that side. They're, they're going to have four or five different options. You know, the, the two wide men are going to be in there. You're going to have at least... One, if not both midfielders, you know, the, the number 10, he's going to be breaking his neck to get in there. So it's, at times it can be a, a, an unselfish role and that's why I wouldn't like to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, we talked a lot about uh, the strikers. In terms of attacking movement, I think since Carlos Colbran came to the club, he was keen to get patterns of play across. At Rotherham, you could see that, that even though we were 1-0 down for... Uh, large, large parts of, of the second half it took right until the 90 plus minute to, to find the equaliser. The same patterns of play were still there. It showed that they're learning and adapting to the movements that Carlos wants here. Well, I think that's the thing. You know, if, if you have got a striker who just stays within the width of the post, then, you know, as a, as a centre back or a full back or whatever, you know where to hit them. You know, you can, you can pretty much find them with your eyes closed. When you are asking your centre forward to be more mobile, you do need a lot more work on the training ground to just understand, you know, when he comes deep, I can run into that spot. And, you know, you don't want two, two people running into the same spot at once sort of thing. So inevitably, it is going to take time and it's going to take training ground work. And as, I, as I said earlier, you know, hopefully these, these two weeks without mm. a game, yeah. they've really been able to build up that on Absolutely. That yeah, that, you know, in the same way as when these guys were playing, it was about understanding what your other centre forward was going to do. Yeah, absolutely. And that brings me on to my next point, really, is we've come into this game off the back of an international break. Firstly, as, as players, I'll start with you, Pav. What, what was that like when, when you had international breaks? 
I got a few days off. That was that was the best part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, but 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 as Stuart said, you know, you you've got two weeks uh, between games, so 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 you can uh, so you can work on 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 different aspects of of your game. Uh, I'm sure managers uh, enjoy them the most. Uh, uh, but then again, in 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 some teams, uh, I suppose there's a lot of call call ups, so yeah. so he's yeah. not got his full uh, full squad to to uh, to adjust and adapt. So uh, so it's it's depend depending on what club and how many internationals they've got. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think that's the thing as well. I think that's the thing that if you've got a a good number of 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 your squad not gone anyway, maybe if you're just missing a couple of players. It's not the end of the world. You can work on on things, especially from Huddersfield's point of view, because it's, it's a great opportunity, as Stuart said, to you know iron things down, get more used to, to to the manager's ideas. But if you've got half your squad missing, or maybe more than half your squad missing, away for two weeks on international duty, and you you limited the numbers to what you can do, it can be really really frustrating. Not alone for for the manager or the head coach. But for for the other players that have been left behind, yeah, absolutely. And, and Stuart, you said it before. Obviously, we, we've come into that international break. There was just one player uh, unavailable. Obviously, Pippa was with Spain's under twenty ones. Also, in that period, we've seen the likes of Christopher Schindler, Lewis O'Brien, uh, Alex Pritchard all return to training. Two weeks of training under their belts. After what was the first four games where you pick up four points and you start to see the style developing more, albeit this weekend's game against Swansea will be a very difficult one, there's then hope, isn't there, that now that the squad is settled, everyone knows who's here, who's not going to be here, that's when you then kick off. Yeah, I mean, I said, as you said, there's a lot of things falling into place. There's, there's a, those injuries, the, the transfer window shutting, there's that, that that work. It, it just does feel like the the first half of every season, even even in normal times, is always really bitty because of those international breaks and that transfer window. And it, it kind of feels like you need to get the first couple of international windows out of the way, and then you can finally, you know, really get going. And and now it's now it's two games a week, you know, with the exception yeah. of the next international break, it's two games a week from now until Christmas. You know, you really do get into a rhythm. So, you know, you can, if you, if you start well, you can get on a roll. And if you start badly, you know, that can snowball as well. So you, re you really do want to hit the ground running now and, and, and get into to good shape. And Huddersfield have got to hope, that, say, the fact they're playing teams who've probably got more internationals and have less of that time works in their advantage. Absolutely. And, and Pav, obviously, going back to, to your playing days, you were at Huddersfield Town and, and moved to Swansea. Talk us through... What was that? What that was like for you? Obviously, you had a, a really great career at Huddersfield Town. Then you made the move to Swansea. Talk about your time at both clubs. Uh, yeah, well, Huddersfield. I was three years. Uh, looking back now, it what was the best time of, of my career. I scored, scored. I think I played my best football and, and scored the most goals, uh, and uh, and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, didn't didn't really want to leave. I, I, I keep saying I was a little pushed out a little bit, uh, so so uh, it was a bit disappointing. But but then again, going to a club like Swansea, which which obviously is a big club as well, uh, you know, I was I was up for it. I, I went down. Kenny Jacket was the manager at the time. Spoke to him and, and more or less signed signed the next day. Really, so. Uh, but I, but uh, it's, I was only uh, half a year at Swansea uh, at the time. Through the half year, uh, talking about changing styles, there was three managers while I was there. Uh, the last one being uh, Roberto Martinez, who obviously had a completely different style to uh, to what I was used to. And, and after after half uh, half a year, uh, I moved on. Uh, but half a year there, I enjoyed my time there. It's it, it's a nice town. Uh, and uh, it was a shame maybe because because I had a two and a half year contract. I, I sometimes think about maybe I could have just stayed, maybe not not left, and and, and tried to get uh, fight fight uh, fight my way into the team. But obviously I, I chose otherwise. But 
Uh, but no regrets, like it's it, it's one of them, isn't it? Do, do do you still look back at your time at both clubs and and look how we're getting on now in the in the championship? Yeah, yeah, I think I think well, I think that's that's each footballer is that if you know you've played somewhere, then you're always going to look out for for the team, no matter if you've you've played a few games or or, or you've been there a few years. So so it's one of them. You you, you always look see see how they're doing. You you check the scores and. And after the weekend, check see where they are in the table. I think that's that's just natural. You and obviously throwing back to to this weekend's game. Do do you think this will be a really interesting encounter, not only for both teams but for for neutrals as well because of the the similar styles? I think maybe you'll get a good um, barometer of where Huddersfield are and the, the, the new coach going up against a good side, a good football inside, um, who, oh God, and as I mentioned, probably are better away from home than they are down at, at the Liberty. And, and, you know, it's going to be a test for, for Swansea as well because they've got a, an informed side full of confidence. I think it's, it would be a great game for a, a pack Liberty, but sadly, um, in, in the situation that we are, there's not going to be any any fans once again, but I just incident to see or oh, hear about Pav uh, signing for. I nearly signed for Swansea in 2004. We could have been strike partners up front. Oh, uh, the career <laughs> came, the, the contract came to an end at Norwich. Um, I was given a free track. I was 36, um, and I'm good mates with, uh, with with Kenny Jacket. Played with Kenny at Watford and and Wales, and he said, "Oh, come come down, come come down for a year." I'm, you know. I'd, do a bit of coaching and, and one thing or another. But I wanted to sort of, because I only had a couple of years left in me and I wanted to sort of stay at the highest level that I could. And I got a, an opportunity to go to, to Gillingham for, for, for two years. They were still in the championship. So I opted to go down there. I've got to say the biggest mistake in my life. I wish, I, especially with, you know, having a chance to play with Pavel. It would have been brilliant. <laughs> I don't think we would have, I don't think we would with the player though, because it was Truns was I wanted. Truns was so. I'm gonna say yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you had a good you had a good side then. They they were a yeah, good size yeah. Swansea then. Yeah, Bayo Bayo. When I went, Bayo was still there as well. So so they were pretty strong up front. So so it'd be difficult to get rid of them too. <laughs> Stuart, can you imagine oh. you and Pav up front? I think we've lost you. Is you and still there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, bloody yeah. hell, my daughter's, daughter's FaceTiming me. Sorry, lads. Genius. That's all right. The beauty of modern technology, eh? <laughs> Stuart, can you I'm imagine... working, I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine uh, you and Pav up front together? Well, I think, I think if I'd have been a, a centre-back at that time, I'd have probably been waking up every night imagining it. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, not a, certainly not a combination that you would... Uh, want to face your, uh, your your heading would certainly get lots of uh, lots of work against these two they were a pretty pretty formidable pair the pair of them yeah I, I, I mean I, I really I really enjoyed like playing off uh, who would be like the, the main target man I'd be the one like uh, especially at Huddersfield I think my best time in my career was at Huddersfield because I was playing with Boovy at the time yeah and he, he just drawn all the attention and I think he'd be saying with, with you and Ed that he'd just take all the attention and I could just roam about picking balls second balls and, and I really enjoyed that role Is that the same for you Ewan? To be fair, I don't think I ever played with anybody bigger than me up front uh, <laughs> I mean when, when I was <laughs> Uh, in my last year at Norwich, we signed Peter Crouch on loan from Aston Villa, but there was no way. I, 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 that's a that's a lie. Actually, I remember the playoff final for Leicester. We played myself, Big Steve Walsh, who was a centre forward, or, who was a centre yeah. forward converted from centre half, and Big Ian Ormond Roy, who was six foot seven. <laughs> I, I just let <laughs> big sticks. You go for everything in the air. I'll be there just to put the ball away. But I, do you know what? I I didn't mind taking because um, I. 99% of the time, I would play with a, a a quicker, a smaller man up front with me, and I didn't mind that. You know, I I, I don't, I didn't mind taking the knocks because I knew that they would create me so many opportunities. Yeah, yeah absolutely, it, Stuart. Obviously, just just finally with this game, like you and said, it will be a really good barometer, won't it, to see how far Huddersfield Town have come, especially with these two weeks. 
uh, under Carlos Cobra. Yeah, you know, as, as the guys have alluded to before, I think we've got to be patient with this team. You know, there's been a lot of changes, stylistic changes as well as personnel. You know, we can't we can't panic if uh, if they have a have a bad day. You know, here and there in the early part of the season, but it'd be interesting to see see things come together and just see these ideas come into place. And as Ewan says, you know, Swansea will be a good a good good test of uh, test of how they've um, how they've adapted to this to this new thinking, and and hopefully a good a good springboard for the uh, for the rest of the year. Yeah, one hundred percent. It will definitely be uh, an interesting game. Huddersfield Town fans, if you're watching this. Uh, to watch the game at the Liberty Stadium, you have to purchase a match pass for iFollow HTAFC, which costs £10. Uh, do that on our website. Ewan, Pav, Stuart, thank you very much for joining us. And, and hopefully it will be a fantastic game with a Huddersfield Town win. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks.